Hello, my friends. Welcome once again to Faith Walk 101. We're so glad that you could join us. So we have been talking about the six woes God is warning Israel about back in the book of Isaiah. And uh, so Isaiah the prophet is going to Israel, warning them about the things that God is uh, telling them that, that they have transgressed against him and that he's going to bring judgment on Israel. And so what we're looking at are the parallels of how that also applies to us today. Yes, we know that in the book of Isaiah, God is talking to Israel. But, can't, you know, Paul says that these things were written, written for our learning. So can we learn something from this? Yes, we can. Isaiah is telling them to repent to turn from their wicked ways, their transgressions against God. And I believe that God is doing the same thing today. He's telling us to repent, to turn from our wicked ways. And he's also saying, if you don't, there is going to be a judgment. This is what the Bible calls reaping and sowing. And so if you sow these things, you're going to reap a whirlwind. Now, we serve a just God and he's a loving God and because of that there has to be some repercussions from this rebellious behavior against God so what about us today I believe that we're doing the same things and so our behavior today exhibits the same as Israel back then the first woe that we talked about was them turning from being greedy and selfish. They were greedy and selfish to the point where they were walking over other people, covetousness, uh, this worldly wealth. And do we see that today? People are so much about gaining wealth and uh, so much to the point that we are greedy. But get this, God says the punishment for this behavior is going to be a famine. And so today, as we uh, try to accumulate more and more, what we're seeing are shortages. Shortages to the point where prices of things are going up higher and higher. So there is always a, a consequence uh, for our behavior. And so if we would just get enough, if we would only get what we need, we don't have to be greedy. We don't have to be selfish. You cannot take any of this with you. When you die, it stays here. So why would you want to accumulate all these things? And so God is saying, turn from this, because this is covetous to just be greedy and selfish. And so the punishment is a famine. So we're going to talk about in this next lesson uh, is the second woe of this rioting and partying and drunkenness. Does that sound familiar? Uh, it seems like that's what uh, we want to do today, is just have fun. I don't want to be serious about anything. I just want to uh, use something to numb the pain so I don't really have to deal with life. And we're seeing that also. But God says, you know what? Uh, he told them back then, this rioting and, and reveling and drunkenness he says, your punishment is going to be captivity and all the misery that attend to it. Now, let's look at uh, today um, when, uh, when it come, comes to things like alcoholism and uh, being addiction. The, the uh, end result of that is addiction. And addiction is uh, being... Uh, is a, I think another example of captivity, being captive, being addictive. And he says that from this captivity, there's going to be misery that attends it. And trust me, anyone who is addicted to anything or anyone who has come out of addiction can testify that there is misery that co goes along with it. But God is warning us. And so we want to take heed to God's warning. We don't want to have to sample, uh, try these things. We want to trust God, and we know that what God is telling us, 
We want to take heed to it. And so listen to what he says in the scripture. And this is from Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. He says, woe to those who rise up early in the morning. So uh, they that may follow strong drink. They seek out the strong drink as soon as they get up. The first thing, my friends, if you seek uh, alcohol when you first get up, you have a problem. You really do have a problem. And you have been taken captive to strong drink. And the end result is going to be misery. So he says they get up early and they continue until they are inflamed with wine. And so you start to drink early and you don't stop until you're inflamed. This is really a sad condition to be. God is warning us. Uh, it's been reported that in America, about 14.1 million people suffer from alcohol use. That is a lot of people. That's a lot of people trying to numb themselves from the issues in this world. Well, God is already warning us. He's telling us, you know, um, you know, no person that took that first drink said that I'm going to become an alcoholic. No. So God has already warned us that uh, to be cautious, to be careful. And uh, he's saying the end result is you could be taken captive by uh, this uh, attitude of wanting to party all the time and to dismiss um, being serious about life. So remember the punishment was captivity. Today we would call that addiction. Misery, you know, uh, he said they would have misery. Well, the misery today is the heartache from addiction. And trust me, uh, if you are, have been addicted, uh, if you are addicted, then you know that there is misery that comes with it, not only to you, but to family members, those that are around you, those that love you. God continues to warn us. Uh, he wants to awaken a sinful nation to repentance, uh, to bring us back to him, to awaken us, uh, to help us, because he loves us. Uh, so people are drowning in their misery. And uh, God says, come to me. God is the great physician. Jesus is the great physician. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the counselor that helps us, that directs us. And why would we not want to come to him? So when we come to him, I really believe that God will direct us to the right people to help us, uh, people that will counsel us, that will lead us. Now remember, as Christians, we are to make disciples that make disciples. And making disciples means that we walk alongside uh, people, that we encourage them, that we teach them uh, so that they be can become strong in their faith. So this is not a suggestion that God is making. This is a commandment that he is commanding believers uh, that we would grow in our faith, become strong, and make disciples. And so that... Um, we can help one another, encourage one another, because there are people that are struggling. Uh, but well, God has the solution. It's Jesus Christ. All right, my friend. So in our next lesson, we're going to talk about this third woe. And this third woe is those uh, that lie without shame. And so we live in a world where people lie and they have no shame and it does not bother their conscience. And that's the, what we're going to talk about. And these people that uh, live like that, the Bible tells us that they actually pursue sin. They actually pursue it. And so uh, we're going to talk about uh, people who lie intentionally. And maybe you know uh, people like that. And hopefully you're not one of those people. But remember this. God has a solution to all our problems. And he's constantly warning us. He's constantly teaching us guiding us. He's opening our, our eyes. He has his arms open wide. Uh, he loves us. And uh, there's no reason why we should not come to him. Uh, he is a loving God. Regardless of what you've been through, what you're going through, the condition you're in right now, come to him. He loves us. 
Uh, he wants us to come to him. And uh, that is such a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful avenue uh, that we have as Christians is that we can come to a loving God and regardless of what we've done, regardless of what we're doing, he will cleanse us. He will wash us with his word. We're covered with the blood of Jesus. And the wonderful thing is that once we come to him, we are covered by the blood of Christ. And you know what? God no longer sees our sin. He has made us white as snow. And you might not feel like that, but that's what he does to us. And that uh, makes us feel so good inside, knowing that we have someone that forgives us and loves us. My friends, I hope this message has been encouraging to you. Continue to join us on Faith Walk 101 as we dis discuss in our next lesson the woe about those who lie intentionally.